Layer lines are really easy to make disappear, but more fundamentally than that, they just don't matter and shouldn't be a concern at all. Everyone always points to 3D printed layer lines and say, those are terrible things. We have to figure out ways to get rid of those. But why are layer lines frowned upon? Well, in the early days of 3D printing, they were just garbage because garbage 3D printers would leave blobs and skips and yes, fat variations of layer lines all over the place. But today, 3D printed parts don't really have that problem. They just have a slightly linear texture that almost goes down to a linear mat on a really good 3D printed part. But even then, why do people still think that an injection molded part is better than the layer lines of a 3D printed part? Injection molded parts are not better. Injection molded parts are smooth because they are forced to be smooth. Injection molding is not allowed to have really any sort of texture whatsoever because it makes it unmoldable almost immediately. Textures are fantastically expensive and almost unachievable in any context inside of injection molding. So the idea that layer lines are an inferiority is just silly. They're just simply something that's different. 3D printed parts are allowed to have textures. They're allowed to have a diamond pattern or fuzz or matte finish or maybe full on hair. All of that can be done with 3D printing and is absolutely impossible to do with injection molding. So it's very easy to say that 3D printing is a vastly superior process to molding because you can have absolute textures, which molding physically cannot do. So now that we've got that all cleared up, let's go ahead and look at how you actually apply these textures to a 3D printed part. In this context, we're gonna talk about just FDM because that's what we do here at Slant3D, mass production 3D printing. If you want to get textures onto a part, there's about three core ways that you can get it done. The best way is to do it inside of CAD. So you go into some software, whatever you happen to be using, and you create a small patch of pattern, and then you can replicate it and pattern it across the entire part. This is a little bit difficult to do because with more complex parts like curved surfaces, applying a pattern can be tough in a lot of programs. The other issue that you have is that there's a huge amount of computation to keep all of that pattern contained and controlled. So it's not very resource efficient or computationally efficient, but if you're making a final product, you should have little bit of resources set aside in order to make that possible in order to create a good quality product. The way to design these patches is a whole kind of topic in and of itself, so we're not gonna go too deep into it. But it's a way, if you have a generative software like OpenSCAD, then you can do all kinds of cool tricks to randomize it and make sure that it doesn't appear like a repeating pattern all the way through. The other option is to just use the Cura Fuzzy feature. The Cura Fuzzy feature is wildly underutilized because it allows you to just basically create some noise on the outside of the part so that as the extruder nozzle is going by, all it does is wobble just a little bit to create a little bit of roughness, or it could create a lot of roughness. You can have that wobble be as deep or as intermittent as you want it to be. Those settings inside of Cura are defined and there's a help section that explains them in more detail, but it allows you to create basically a roughened surface on a part so it can be really useful. The other option that's available is to actually use uh, slicers like IdeaMaker where they allow you to import a black and white image which is basically a height map and then that height map is imprinted across the entire surface of the part. This can be a little difficult to do depending on the geometry of the part but it's really not that bad but it allows you to create very custom features with very low bandwidth because you can create a 2D map from any sort of texture or download an image online and then imprint that onto your product but it is less controllable because it's happening inside of a slicer. So the best option is CAD. The second best option is idea maker kind of height map references. And then the third best option is to use Cura because it's just limited to random noise. But ultimately, again, layer lines don't matter. Design your product for the texture and create it by that process. Materials like wood are premium materials and it has layer lines. They do not matter. The problem is, is that many people are trying to 3D print injection molded design. At that point, the layer lines do become an issue because the part is expected to be smooth. You are setting yourself up to fail. It's just the incorrect process. So don't worry about layer lines. They are a feature of the process. They are not a bug. Use them, control them. You are able to have any texture you want with a 3D printed part where injection molding can't possibly have it. Have a great day, everybody.